one of the biggest games of the year. And the yeah, Bills are coming off a game in which it just had to feel that, the, especially on defense, they just weren't there. They just – something's no. up here, which is they were not into the game. Their defense is not like that at all. Uh, you know, who knows? It could have been we won the – we just clinched the division championship. Yeah. Now we've got Detroit coming up, <clears throat> sandwich game, California, that kind of thing. It happens, and that's exactly – there's no other explanation in my mind. Not that the Rams aren't aren't a halfway decent team, but you know, forty four points. That's not the Bills. So Detroit gets yeah. the Bills after that type of a game, which is never when you want to face a really good football team. And the, Detroit has not lost in a while themselves on an eleven game win streak. And you know, yeah. it's like at some point they are going to lose again. So, but I am surprised that the line started off at one and a half. I thought the line would be a little bit more like two and a half to three. Yeah, and I think some of that is the injury ambiguity with guys like Decker and Reeder. Um, I, I actually I, – I picked the, the Packers to beat the Lions last week because those two specifically were out of the game. Okay. I thought that the Lions you know, are a better team overall, but those are very key losses. And if they're back, I'm not going to pick against them, against the Bills. But, you know, again, Buffalo is a great football team. They absolutely have the ability to go into Ford Field and win this game. Uh, and they know that, but the Lions do too. And I think I don't want to say that the Lions overlooked uh, Chicago much, but Chicago's Chicago sneakily like matches up well with the Lions, and the Packers don't. Like the Packers' defense, they don't cover the middle of the field at all, like by design. Well, that's where Jared Goff's at his best. <laughs> like if you don't, if you're going to give him the middle of the field, he's going to kill you, and he did. Like Buffalo when their linebackers are healthy and they seem to be doing that right now, they're a lot tougher to exploit than green Bay is. So this is going to be a real challenge for, for Ben Johnson's offense. Uh, they need to get the running game back going. They need to hit the explosive plays. You know, Jameer Gibbs needs to break one off for 25 yards. They need to hit Jamison Williams over the top. They need to get Sam Laporta going where he catches the ball out in space and has one guy to beat and beats him. Uh, and that hasn't been consistently happening with this offense, but it's been been pretty good. But uh, Buffalo, they're just the waves that they come at you with defense. You know the, that that's a really good football team. You know, they're you know they're sort of like the Lions in a way in that when they've had injuries, they've plugged guys in. You know, Matt Milano was out forever. Find guys that work. Yeah, uh, and they have a, a culture and a system there that that works very well for them. And you know that Josh Allen guy's pretty good too. <laughs> Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, what he did last week was just something else. Uh, and what do you think about how the Lions have done this year or even the last couple of years with this defense with athletic quarterbacks? Has that you been know, a problem? Yes, it has. They've gotten better this year. Um, and, and it's weird because they're playing more man. And normally to stop a, a running quarterback, you'd go a little bit more zone. Um, they've actually gotten better at it because their defensive line, the interior defensive line is not giving that gap up the a and b gaps are not you're not running there the, you know if if you're josh allen you gotta you gotta run outside a little bit and then go uh caleb williams got pretty much bottled up and he didn't really seem all that inclined to run either which was weird but they've done a pretty good job of of rush containment okay. now with all the new faces that they've got that's tough but i'll, I'll say ezekiel turner and jack campbell jack campbell's been playing some really good football lately and he's, they don't do a spy, but he's smart enough and savvy enough to understand that, okay, I'm facing Josh Allen. He, it's been, I'm, I'm at what, four Mississippi now after the snap? He's probably running by now. Let, sure. me, let me go get him. Yeah. And I think that that sort of sense with him and his development in that regard has helped a lot. Uh, it certainly helped a lot when they played uh, against more like Baker Mayfield early in the year. Now, Baker Mayfield being the only quarterback who beat them, they did a pretty good job of keeping him running. And he's a guy that, you know, he, he sneakily chews up yards. They did a great job against Geno Smith, another guy that you don't think of as a runner, but who can, you know, he exploit can. you. And uh, they, they've done a really good job with those guys. So hopefully, you know, Josh Allen, again, he's a different animal um, at his size, his speed, his fearlessness. Uh, that's, look, he, he's going to be, I don't know if he's going to be the MVP, but he certainly belongs at the top of the list right now in my mind. And I say that as a Jared Goff supporter, but where are the bills without Josh Allen? And uh, yeah, he's, I know. he's a catalyst and, you know, they do have, they do have a run game. Their offensive line is not bad at all. Um, one of the better ones in the league, I think. 
It's, it's, it's a tough test. It's going to be a fantastic football game. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that the nation gets to see this because this could very well be, and it's the cliche to say, it very well could be a Super Bowl preview. I don't yeah. think anybody would be surprised by that. I don't understand the whole idea, though, about putting like four really big games on at the same time on Sunday. It just drives me nuts. Yeah. It's like yeah. they have like nothing at one o'clock except Miami and Houston. And OK, big deal. And they got all these yeah. great games at four o'clock. It's like, I mean, you know, it's you know, we're one people, we're one, we're one each. I mean, you know, why would you do that? You know, why, all you have to do is schedule it at one, move it from four to one. You do it all the time. One to four. I mean, I don't understand that. Everybody's going to be watching the Bills in Detroit, but there's some other really good games at four o'clock. You just are. mentioned Tampa Bay and the Chargers. You've got Pittsburgh and, and uh, Philly. I mean, wow. That's a fantastic so, game right there. That that also could be a Super Bowl preview. It could be. <laughs> Nobody yes. would be surprised. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, because that running game, like you said, and especially if that if that uh, interior of the Lions is not healthy, that could be a big uh, issue because yeah. Brady, the offensive coordinator for Detroit, has done such a great job in in uh, balancing the offense there and running the football more. And by the way, Brady's another. Head coach yeah, he's, and candidate. He's another guy, you know, came from LSU, was I believe it was with Joe Burrow, wasn't yep. it? And, yes, you know, he was. Now, now running in Buffalo and he's crafted a very good offense. They have a very good culture. Um, they you know, we talked about this in the draft, you know, portion back when we talked earlier. You can look at guys, you know, like that guy's a lion, that guy's a raven, you know, like that guy's a buffalo bill. Like you 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 can see who fits and who doesn't fit. And that's I think that's a huge key to having a successful franchise. You can tell. That guy's a that guy's a San Francisco 49er. Um, yeah, especially if he's injury prone. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah, what they well, but, off. I, I think with McDermott though is they have like what you saw in the game, the 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 Bills Rams game. It's like he'll do things like that when he when he did the timeout deal. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's like, why are you doing that? You why did you run a play and then need to go? Why you, nobody gets an onside kick. I mean, it did, I mean, it, those are yeah, the things was, he does do that frustrate yeah. Bills fans because uh, Bills fans really think that he's he's on a short leash. But you are wow. right; the organization is very is put together by the Pagulas very well. It is, and you get the feeling that even if McDermott wasn't getting the job done, that it, who knows? Maybe if things don't work out. They don't want to lose Brady. Maybe they elevate Brady and say goodbye to McDermott, but they'll still be fine because they they've really built a nice organization there. So yeah, and and they're they got a lot of good key players on that team that are still oh, yeah. you know under thirty years old and and rising up together. And that, yep. that's sort of the way Detroit is. That's that's what one of the reasons why this game is going to be fantastic and why it's very difficult to predict uh, because I think this is one of those games. You know, if they played a hundred times. 5149 oh, yeah 5050 50, 50. yeah 50, <laughs> yeah exactly right um it's it's going to be you know who who makes fewer mistakes who who wins on special teams where the lions have been spectacular this year you know who who's... and the bills just made a big mistake on special teams on sunday and that's not their first time doing that either uh that that is that is a hidden edge in this game uh the lions punter jack fox is having a phenomenal season Look, I, I said this the other day. We're in a golden age of NFL punting right now. If you look at like the averages and, and how they're pinning guys and how they're you know getting hang time and everything, like there's a tremendous plethora of punting talent in the NFL right now. Jack Fox is right near the top of that. And Dave Phipp, the special teams coordinator, has done a great job with coverage guys, with having schemes, with having designs. It's they're not gonna lose the game because of that. And I think that's that's if you're looking for like one of those hidden edges, I would say that Josh Allen's ability to coax pass interference penalties out of guys like Terry and Arnold is one that could favor the Bills. But I think special teams, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past the Lions to, to win the game on special teams with a, you know, a a blocked punt or a long return or, you know, you know stymieing, you know, flipping the field, you know, fourth sure. and 15 from your own 20. And the Bills take over at their own 15, um, completely changing. The, the Jack Fox can do that. The punt team can do that. And so I think if you're looking for the hidden edge, that's probably it. And I, I, that's probably why I lean the Lions. But again, this is, okay. you know, wh where's the coin to flip, you know? It's, yeah. <laughs> that's where we're at. And they have home field advantage. So they uh, do. And it's a massive advantage. Fans of Buffalo, it is. Yes, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't want to be playing in Buffalo. That's for sure no, at this God, time no. of year. 
So, <laughs> but I think that the rest of the country would love to see a Detroit Buffalo Super Bowl. I, I know we're all sick of the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, <laughs> except Kansas City Chief fans. So hopefully uh, we'll see these two teams again. Uh, like you said, it sounds like you're leaning towards Detroit, which I think also makes a, a lot of sense. Why yeah. not? Uh, it, the way, like I said, the way they're playing, the way the Chiefs are playing, just bet against them uh, winning, not necessarily covering, but bet against them winning at your own peril. Let's talk about, I think the biggest, uh, if I got anybody, if I did ask anyone to ask me anything uh, to ask you, it would, I, I would think it'd be about injuries. I would think it'd be yeah. about are the Lions, because Hutchinson obviously is not coming back unless somehow he is back for the Super Bowl, which I guess right. is still a possibility. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, I, th I think the easiest way to say it was uh, there was a picture taken during last Thursday night's game when they, they beat the Packers of their top five pass rushers um, or five five starters from the defense that were all watching the game together at Alex Anzalone's house. Uh, it was Hutchinson, Anzalone, Derek Barnes, Marcus Davenport, and Kyle Pecco, who had worked his way up throughout the offseason and was going to be a valuable piece of the defense. Um, they've all been hurt. Um, all are still hurt. We're not getting Pecco back. We're not getting Barnes back. But, uh, you know, Anzalone will be back by Christmas, hopefully. Hutchinson okay. could – it's been floated that Hutchinson could possibly play in the NFC Championship game if the Lions get there. I'm a little skeptical on that, but I wouldn't put it past him. Okay. But the Super Bowl is a little bit more realistic um, for the the broken um, bone in his leg. So you know that, that's and Davenport's obviously out for the year as is his custom. So you know they, they've they've plugged and and played and done a lot with a lot of reserves. You know plucking people off the street. Uh, their their highest graded defensive player by Pro Football Focus in the win over the Packers was Ezekiel Turner. He wasn't on the team three weeks ago. Like <laughs> that, They are finding guys who fit their system and fit their culture. And I, I, I give Brad Holmes, the general manager, a ton of credit. I give Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn a ton of credit for integrating these guys in. Look, there were plays this past week where Quan Alexander was out there and he had no clue who he was supposed to be covering. And it didn't kill them. And I think, you know, he, the longer he plays, the more he gets involved in the system. Sure. If, he can, if he can stay healthy the arrow's really pointing up because when some of these guys do come back, you know, they're going to get John Kaminsky back um, perhaps before the playoffs, but probably for the start of the playoffs. Okay. So you're looking at guys that are going to be able to come back. Josh Pascal should be back soon. DJ reader should be ready this week though. We're still, we're still waiting on, on some of the practice things as Dan Campbell said in his uh, Monday press conference, Thursday of this week is going to be very big on that. Um, whether you're going to get Reader, Pascal, uh, doesn't sound like Levi Ansarike will be back anytime soon. Uh, if Yatsu Malifan remains on injured reserve, they could get Jalen Reeves Maben back this week. It's like I'm reading off like half the more than half of the defensive roster here, especially in the front part. Uh, and all these guys are hurt and you know in, in various states of coming back. And they're still 12 and 1 and still have a top five defense. That's uh it blows my mind. <laughs> you know, it, it is. It just shows you, though, uh, because if these players were picked off the street and uh, joined uh, a three-win team, uh, you wouldn't notice anything different about the three-win team, and yeah. maybe the player would would nobody would notice him either. But it just goes to show when you do integrate new players as long as there is a good foundation there it, it, it can be okay you can figure it out because you have so much still so many good players and key guys that are still healthy that can pick up the rest of those players and also those guys wind up coming into the organizations it's just an an, an aura of just confidence it's a big difference Oh, yeah. Um, I think Zadaria Smith is the best example. Uh, in in four games in Detroit, he's done more um, pressures, sacks, uh, QB hits, and tackles, and tackles for losses uh, in four games than he got in the entire season before that in Cleveland. Uh, it's just, you know, a different – the expectation is higher. Uh, he wound up being a perfect schematic fit. Uh, he's a, he's the ideal uh, Marcus Davenport replacement. And, uh, wow, yes. He's, he, he's been just – phenomenal in that role, you know, rushing off the right side of the defense and uh, getting guys like that. Look, that they had to make a little bit of a trade for him. Sure. But, the, you know, 
finding the guys who can fit in and do that. You know, you're, you're looking at uh, just in, it, to your point, though, they do have enough key players that are still healthy. And that's Brian Branch, Kirby Joseph at safety. Um, they are still, in my mind, the best safety tandem in the league this year. They are impactful. They will give up the occasional big play because they're going to make more than that by trying to get them. And that's the, exactly the way that Aaron Glenn wants them to play. The outside cornerbacks, Carlton Davis and the rookie Terry and Arnold, have been really, really good. Really good in coverage. Uh, Arnold gets too many penalties. He's working on that. Uh, but his coverage is – his man – coverage is outstanding already it's kind of the rest of everything that he's got he's got to find the ball he's got to you know find his lanes a little bit but uh it enables the the guys up front to do different things and Aline McNeil in the middle uh they missed him last week after he went out against Green Bay but he, he should be back he's got a uh okay it sounds like a jaw injury um he was technically put in the concussion protocol but it sounds like he's not actually in that now um it's it's weird. He's ha he's had it, and he had this um, last year. His jaw like popped out of thing, and it like made his head like. And and I actually talked to somebody who's had the same problem, and he's like, "It's devastating when you get it." Oh, um, but, but sounds it, like it. You know, when it gets popped back in, then you're good yeah. to go. So whether oh, they can give okay. him a different mouthpiece or something, <laughs> I don't know. But you know, he's uh, a football he, player. Yeah, he he's been he's been fantastic this year. He is playing at it. He certainly belongs in the Pro Bowl um, if the Lions are eligible to go to the Pro Bowl because uh, they have they have bigger fish to fry this year than than uh, the the ceremonial games in Orlando. That is for sure. Uh, so Branch, you think also he's going to be okay? He should be. Yeah, uh, he's he's a warrior, man. He uh, he really took on you know especially after Aiden Hutchinson went out. He's like somebody's got to be the instigator. Somebody's got to be the catalyst for making plays. And he's stepped into that role and has done fantastic at it. You know, they moved him more into the safety role that he played at Alabama. And he's just thrived at that. I mean, you know, he was, he was one of the best slot corners in the league as a rookie. Uh, he hasn't, I don't think he's played more than 50 snaps in the slot this year. Um, okay. Just roaming around and doing everything. And Amik Robertson deserves a lot of credit for stepping into that slot. Amik's a guy who's going to give up some completions, but he's going to tackle them right away. Uh, he's very good at limiting the yards after the catch, and that's sort of what Aaron Glenn wants in the defense. So they are uh, they are patched together nicely, but they do still have a solid core. And again, some of those guys are going to be coming back. And uh, as long as you don't get any more injuries, sure. I, I think, think we're past the worst of it, hopefully. <laughs> well, uh, you, you never know, but... Uh, you would hope that there's so much good karma going on there that that's exactly what will take place. Yes. Um, so for this upcoming game, who do you think more than likely won't play that could play? You know, uh, on defense, it, I think Branch will be back. Um, okay. McNeil should be back. Reader is a question. Uh, I hope he's back. They've missed him. Uh, I know Miles Adams play, came in and actually played pretty well last week, and Jonah Williams gave everything that he had, but it, they're different when DJ Reader is in there. Reader and McNeil together are oh, yeah. really – they're a very potent interior combo. Um, Reader, by the way, just came off the game before, got two sacks in a game for the first time since 2018. So he's he's still getting it done, uh, and they missed him. Uh, Pascal – at this point, we we never really know what's going on with him. He he just he's one of those guys that just cannot stay healthy and stay on the field. And it's unfortunate because when he has played this year, he's played better. They, you're starting to see why they liked him in that draft a couple of years ago. But okay. uh, it's just it's so inconsistent when he's available that uh, it's it's frustrating. All right, and then what about Decker a tackle? Oh, that's that's the big one. That's the offensive injury, and they have absolutely missed him. And where they really miss him is in run blocking. And you saw that against Green Bay. Uh, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs could not get going, and some of that was because the left side of the line has become a detriment in run blocking, and they need him back. Um, that, look, I love Andrew Skipper. Uh, I'm sorry, Dan Skipper, who doesn't love Dan Skipper. He's got – he's got <sighs> – He's just not the same guy as Taylor Decker. No, of course not. No. And um we're hoping that Decker's back. It's a it's a knee injury. He got rolled up on in the win over the Colts. Uh actually on a play where uh a skipper whiffed on a block and the pile got rolled into Decker on the other side. Uh so that, that that's 
it would be big to get him back. And he's going to be day to day. Uh, you're going to hear Dan Campbell say that he's day to day until Thursday or Friday. And I would se- I would speculate he will be questionable for the game. Okay. Uh, but it, it, look, if if Taylor Decker can play, he's going to play, even if he's limited. He's done that before. He's done it earlier this season when he had a pec and, and shoulder injury. So uh, it would be great to get him back out there because uh, Graham Glasgow is not playing good football at left guard right now. And they, they tend to want to, they do a lot of movement with their gap and their duo. They've been running more zone and uh, they just can't do as much without Decker in the game. So it's really hurt their run game more than the pass game. 